Great, apparently even up here I can't escape these wretched things. Oh, hello. Howdy. What are you children doing out here? We just came to check this place out. What are you doing here, King Asgore? I'm just contemplating. Contemplating these flowers, taking care of them, helps my soul. Don't mind me, I'm just a very old man that worries too much. Something wrong, sir? Miss Son, I'm afraid my worst fears have come true. Why? What happened? So many moths have gone missing and I'm afraid humans are behind it. You must be wrong, sir. No human in the city has the soul to hurt a monster. I beg to differ. I can name a few. The sergeant, the police force, the citizens, your father... <coughs> I'm sorry. The mayor, who is clearly not your father, Sona. Unless he had another child and he never said anything about it. I'm sure they're fine. You seem pretty confident about that. You know what is you know what is happening, please. I beg you to tell me. You should talk to my father. I know he can help you more than I. No, he can't. He didn't want to. I see. So, young miss, are you the one that tends to this field? Yes, sir. That would explain why she smells of flowers, because it was mentioned that when she came back she smelled of flowers, so this is why. Why? The flowers bring back lots of happy memories. Of someone I lost. That's one thing we have in common. This place brings me memories too. Happy memories. Memories of a family I lost as well. However, right now, for some reason, by looking at your eyes and you surrounded by these flowers, there is someone I remember so vividly. Is that so, sir? And who might that be? <gasps> Is it Kara? Does she remind you of Kara? I wonder if her hair is brown. I bet you her hair is brown. And it's been dyed pink, so... Her hair could technically be brown into this. I bet you've heard terrible stories of us monsters. Yeah, she technically rubbed it in your face. Stories where humans fall into our claws never to return. But I guarantee you, young one, that we monsters have suffered just as much as you have. Do you hate us for locking you in the underground? Sometimes I did. Sometimes I blamed you for taking everything from me. Most of the time I was angry myself for not having the strength. The strength to protect what I loved. How can all monsters depend on such a fool like me? I couldn't protect my own family. Well, children, it's very late and you need to head home. Miss... Just one thing before you go. Please, please consider letting Tori adopt Frisk. I can guarantee you, Frisk could never hope for a better mother. She is brave, smart, and will do the right thing above all else. I'm sure if you gave her the chance, you will think the same as I. Good day, young ones. Sona is very quiet. You told her goodnight, but she seems lost in thought. You are very tired. You go to sleep. It was a long day. Time to sleep. It's time to go to bed. You start dreaming. Oh, blame my neck. I don't want to come back to this one. This one's upsetting me. Kara, your sister's leaving today with her new family. I'm locking you here. I don't want you causing prob trouble. You don't know how much I regret bringing you here. Aren't you going to say anything? You're such a creepy child. Wow. Dang. Sonny is not here. You hear a knock on the door. Frisk, Frisk, are you there? What happened? My parents, I can't find my parents. I wanted to see the human city closer, so I got away and they followed me. But when I turned around, they were gone. This is all my fault. What should I do? Will you help me find them? I don't really have a choice, so I'm going to help. Thanks, Frisk. I'm so scared. This is the last place I saw them. What do you think happened to them? Well, I know Flowey apparently is now around, and I also don't trust Sona at all anymore. Well, not that I trust her anyway. And there were golden pals everywhere. 
Sorry. I'm sorry, Sona? You think Sona might know something? You're doubting everyone, aren't you? You know everyone is capable of doing the most awful things if given a motive. What do you mean? Excuse you, Asgore doesn't have a reason to do anything. And I definitely wouldn't have been here. She wouldn't hurt a monster. Tori is the same as his papyrus. The mayor probably could do it. The sergeant could do it. But I think it's Sona. Don't make me second guess myself. How dare you. <laughs> Flowey. You see a shadow moving around. What is that thing? An echo flower? But it's so scary. Echo flowers are blue. They're not yellow. I don't think I like the surface very much. Everyone is saying the humans kill the monsters that disappeared. Everything is so horrible here. I want my parents. I want to go home. But we have no home, right? There's no place for us in this world. We're all going to die. Wow, everything will get better. Calm down. But my parents are gone and my friends are gone too. We're all going to die. Oh yeah, it's because Frisk is not a friend, huh? You take more monster kids to the orphanage. Sona can help him calm down. Can she? Sona is not here. Oh, blue neck. Frisk, I went out looking for you, but I found a dummy. Sunny, it came to life, and it was very, very angry. I don't know how to calm it. Help me. You left Monster Kid playing with the other kids. We have to find Sana. Stay determined. What is this? Thanks, Frisk. That dummy was very rude. Oh, yeah, huh? Such a shame. It's not like somebody else here is rude. Sona. What's bothering you? You are. The monsters that disappeared and they attacked humans? You're a kid. You shouldn't have to worry about those things. I'm sure everything is going to be just fine. Yeah. No. It's not fine. What is wrong with everyone? It's always like this frisk. Bad things happen, but the world keeps on spinning. People die, people suffer, but everyone keeps living. You might lose what you hold dearest in the world, and yet you have to keep going. You have to keep telling yourself that everything will be fine. If you lose your determination, then you have to fake it, despite all the horrible things that happen around you. We have no choice but to keep on living. That is horrible, though. It's reality, Fresk. That's how life works. I think people can adjust to even the worst of situations. It started to rain. Let's hurry home. Oh, my children, what are you doing out in this weather? You're going to catch a cold. My house is just around here. Come with me. Sure, at least until the rain stops. Oh dear, it's never rained like this in the underground. It's kind of beautiful, but frightening at the same time. Can I offer you something? Why, Mom? She should be giving you an apology. Mom, don't be nice to her. <sighs> Unless... What needs to happen at this point, I feel, is one of them has got to say about Ezreal. Otherwise, Sona's just not going to get it, is she? She has to tell her about Ezreal and Kara. She has to say about her her children. Maybe then, and only then, Sona's going to finally understand Tori a bit more. Oh, you don't happen to have that delicious tea we had the other day, do you? No, sorry. The one who prepped that tea was my husband. Ex-husband. But I do have hot chocolate. Would you like some? It's... Yes, please. You are very good at kicking. I always wanted to learn new recipes. So Tori, where is King Asgore? I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. I heard he's having a hard time dealing with the issues from living on the surface. Not to mention all the monsters disappearing in human attacks. Well, I suppose so. He is the king of monsters after all. Aren't you the queen? No, not anymore. You, you are going to let him handle everything on his own? What do you know? He doesn't need me. He loves making decisions by himself anyway. Why should I care? But you do care. And he seems so lost. 
Don't do that. Don't act as if you know everything. Don't act as if you are always right. You don't know us. You don't care about knowing us. You have an image of us and you've made up your mind about who we are. I'm trying. I want to know the truth. That's why I'm here. About time. Why are you criticizing me? You're as stubborn as I am. Yeah, but she wasn't rude to you. Like, you, she didn't say anything about the way you raise children. Not in the same context that you did. You went a step too far. I can't help him. We think differently. About what? Well, he's done things. Things that I don't think I'll ever forgive. The, the chocolate is ready. Tori served us the chocolate. Tori's chocolate is the best chocolate. Not that the other chocolate is bad. All chocolate is good. But this is better. Don't you agree about the chocolate? Does it have anything to do with your children? Sonna, why are you staring at your chocolate? Drink it. Chocolate is not for staring at, okay? If you don't want it, give it to me. But what do you know about that? Asgore mentioned something about it. My eyes reminded him of someone. I was curious, so I wanted to ask you about it. Your eyes? Why is everyone just ignoring their chocolate? Okay, I'm done. Give me. I'm just imagining, like, the hands just coming out and grabbing, like, the the mug of, like, hot chocolate and just dragging it across, like, right in front of Frisk and just Frisk starts drinking everybody's cups and then eventually everybody looks down and they're like, where did the chocolate go? Yes, I noticed it as well. Your gaze is very familiar to us. If you really want to know. <clears throat> Frisk was not the first human to fall into the underground. Long, long ago, a different child also fell into our world. I had a son back then named Ezreal, who took the child and brought them home. Our son loved the child so much and with time, so did we. We adopted the child and became a family. We were so happy. Those were the happiest days of my life. Where is this child now? One day the child became very ill and we couldn't do anything to save them. It took me so long to realise what had happened. The symptoms had been those of poisoning, not an illness. And why were they poisoned? Did did that, did the, the one in the orphanage poison them? Or did somebody else do it? There was a legend long ago that an angel from above would free the monsters underground. Asgore thought the child was the prophesied angel. He put so much pressure on them to be something special. He told our subjects that the child would free us all, the future of humans and monsters. Of course, the only way to do such a thing was by taking the power of their soul. It must have been too much to bear. Perhaps they thought we only cared about the prophecy. I fear it may have been the child's own idea to die to give us their soul and our freedom. Oh, does she think that... The the Kara took poison in the hopes of like giving them the soul. You took the child's soul? No, not I. My son, Ezreal. The child's last wish before their death was to see the flowers of their village. With their soul, Ezreal crossed the barrier. I do not know what happened, but when he returned, he became dust at me and Asgore's feet. We assumed that the humans thought he killed the child, but he was also always so, so kind. There is no doubt in my mind. He did not harm a single one of his attackers as he attempted to return home. We lost both our children in the same night. Asgore blamed the humans. The entire kingdom agreed. But I did not. If they had not obsessed over ancient stories, our children would have lived. I promised myself that I would never let another child go through what mine had that night. After some time had passed, my dear Frisk came along. It's strange, but I think Frisk saved me, not the other way around. What was the name of the child? Kara. Oh my god, so it is. So the stuff we're hearing at night is Kara. It's Kara's memories. And Tori just told her about Kara. 
I must have a photograph somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. Ah, uh, yes. We were so happy then. I treasure those moments in my heart. That is why, Miss Sona, I must ask you to please allow me a single chance. I know what I lost can never be replaced, but I love Frisk. We could be very happy and... Miss Sona, are you alright? Is she crying? Ah. Sona is crying hysterically. Oh my. Oh my child, what is wrong? It was such a sad story. I'm so sorry, you don't... Wait. What is wrong? It was such a sad story. I'm assuming that she was saying that. It was such a sad story. I'm so sorry, you don't have to... Oh my, I'm getting so emotional myself as well. I'm sorry. Oh, come here. Everything is fine. That happened so long ago and... Oh god. There, there, everything's fine. They hug each other while crying. What happened? I wasn't paying attention. I want more chocolate. Stop it. Give me more chocolate. So I guess she's crying because not only did she learn like the sad truth of Tori, like if Sona has lived as long as I think she has, she may have witnessed Ezreal coming in to the village with Kara. I don't know, maybe, maybe she saw what happened and you know if they just took it as like what they saw right then and there without any context they're like oh my god it, you know but again that's just a theory if she's as old as I think she is but I'm only getting that because the fact that the mayor was in that picture and he was like young and you know it, it made no sense because she wouldn't have been born yet if she is his daughter why would she be in a picture with a young mare? It makes no sense. She's supposed to be his daughter. In fair, in fair sense, they never saw that she was a biological daughter, though. But still. I'm just saying, sounds fishy to me. First, can I ask you a question? Sure. How do you accept when you're wrong? Why is it so hard? It's almost painful. I feel so vulnerable. And it's very scary. I keep thinking of excuses for myself, but the fact that I was wrong is still there. What can I do? How do I just accept I was wrong? You just have to accept it. You were wrong. You were wrong about something, Sana. You can be wrong about things. And it takes a strong person to admit when they're wrong. It even takes a stronger person to learn to accept it. But it really depends on like how you move forward and how you deal with it. It's easy for kids, I suppose. We the adults keep telling kids they are wrong all the time. I'm sorry. Why are you telling me you're sorry? Like you didn't give me much context, but you are sorry though. You start dreaming, oh god. Can't find Kara anywhere. Hopefully Kara went to that mountain to disappear. It's the perfect place for that little monster. What's that noise? It came from over there. Oh, here you are, you little creep. Oh my god, what happened? Hello? I was having a dream. What's up? Human Frisk! We have talked to King Asgore. He thinks we should have lots of fun today for some reason. We thought of a wonderful idea. Where should we take Sauna? San says we should go stargazing and Alphys wants to go to the dump. I think stargazing. Let's never take her to the dump. Seriously, I thought the dump star idea sounded cool. Yeah, but which I I don't know. I I'm not so sure about that. <sighs> because it's not gonna like really connect her with anything, and there has to be a reason. Sans doesn't just suggest things out of the blue. You have to have a reason to suggest it. Oh well, I suppose it's more human appropriate. We will see you both tonight on the top of the mountain. That, oh my, why are we, are we gonna push her in? We should all get ready. 
You can't find Monster Kid. What? Where is he? Frisk, your friend is here with me. I can't let him wander around the orphanage alone now, can I? Oh, that's good. So she's like spending time now with Monster Kid, meaning she's going to get more comfortable with monsters, which is nice to see that she's finally like realizing they're not going to hurt her. I might hurt her, but they're not going to hurt her. But you know, she did, you know, rekindle and connect with Mama Tori. And she said she was sorry to me, but I still would prefer to say she was sorry to Tori. Maybe she will later. You spend all day playing with the monster with Monster Kid and the other children. In the evening the monsters arrive. Frisk, do you really think this is a good idea? When you said you wanted to go stargazing, I thought it was a wonderful idea. But on top of the mountain? Why? It was Sansa's idea. If that skeleton told you to jump off a cliff, would you? Yeah, because I would trust him to catch me. Because Sans, regardless of what he is, you can still trust him. Oh wait, jumping down the hole was no different. Yeah, you didn't win that argument, did you? <laughs> Wowie, here we are again at the summit of the mountain. Well, it would be good to look at the stars. Let's make a wish. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We should enjoy these little moments while they last. But King, shouldn't we be out there searching for the missing monsters? I'm very worried about better, John. It's all up to the humans now. Don't worry, I'm sure we will find them soon. We have to learn to trust humans. But more of the humans, everyone says... Nonsense, humans are cool. They would never hurt someone. Aren't I right, Miss Sauna? Humans can't hurt monsters. Those are the rules. Everyone in the city is so obsessed with rules. Why is that, Sunshine? Rules make it possible for humans to live together. That's the tradition of our village. With no rules, everyone just does what they want. That usually leads them hurting themselves or others. Oh! Think about it. Kara did that. In like the dreams we were having, Kara was actually doing that. Kara was not following the rules. Kara was turning violent. And the other person was showing that aggression back. But they don't do that anymore. I wonder why kind of weird that may seem true but what if the rules are wrong what if the rules hurt someone what if what you consider normal just keeps someone from being happy that is something we can't avoid as long as everyone has free will they would choose their own happiness over everyone else's oh my god is she like starlight glimmer <laughs> she sounds like starlight glimmer all of a sudden they were trying to make the world the way they want it, to suit their selfish desires. By doing so, they make others suffer. Rules are there for a reason, to show us what is right. If everyone obeys the rules and puts their selfishness aside, it's possible this world would be a little less terrible for everyone. Who decides the rules? A king? A mayor? Who decides what is right and wrong? Who could possibly be that wise? I... I don't know. I don't... The right choices are obvious. They're already there. Stupid people are the ones that get confused and think bad things won't do harm. <laughs> you avoided the question. Yeah, she did. Why did she avoid it? You don't understand this world. Everyone is so selfish. Everyone is so brutal. Our will to remain alive is the same one that makes us forget how to live. Humans, you see, are always scared. Our fear of death determines our actions. All the horrible things we do, they're simple reflections of our fears. Determination is nothing more than the fear of dying. That's not true. You can take away someone's soul and they will feel nothing except fear. How does she know that? Fear is always there. You can't get rid of it. That is why we need rules, you see? The control that rules gives us makes it possible to hold back our fears. I see... Wow, me! Worry not, Miss Sonic. Humans don't have to be scared anymore. We monsters will protect you. What? Yeah, we'll catch the idiot that's attacking humans and making monsters disappear. Then we can all live together. 
We've come so far, we can't give up. We, you just watch. You're right. My parents wouldn't have left me all by myself. I know they will come back soon. Mariton is strong. He's not going to give up. Not now, that he could be the famous star of the human world. We lose things, but we gain others. Life is wonderful if we can see that. I'm sure humans will discover we can all be one big happy family. You are right. I am the king and I can find a way. There is always a way. Look, we wanted to see the stars and it seemed an impossible dream. Yet here we are, humans and monsters together under this beautiful sky. Sona, my child, your problem is that you think fear is the strongest force in the world. It is not. You know what also beats fear? Hope. As long as we hold on to hope, fear can't take control. Nanny, what are you doing here? Ah, uh, this young man brought me. Isn't he a charm? <laughs> it's not a big deal, I know a few shirkets. My sweet, you've got this all wrong. Determination comes from hope, not fear. Love, don't forget love. You certainly should not forget love. That's what kept me alive for so many years. If we wish on big stars and all our dreams came true, imagine what could be possible with real things. I see. Hope. I suppose it wouldn't hurt trying. Sana looks truly happy. When was the last time she smiled like this? I can't remember. Hey, but not enough, but not enough of that. We come here to see the stars, right? Hey, sunshine, I'd like to try my telescope. Thanks. Sona peers into the telescope. Oh my god, is that a shooting star? It's so beautiful. I've never seen anything so pretty in my life. It's green. It must be composed of iron nickel. W what? Wait, let me see. Sans looks into the telescope. <laughs> Good one, doll. Sans has red lipstick around his eye. <laughs> she pranked you with your own prank. This is so cool. <laughs> it looks like you finally got your comeuppance. Wait, you didn't suggest we come all the way up here just so you could prank her, did you? Well, uh, yeah. I thought I needed to put some backbone into my pranks, you know. Sans! Oh my god. <laughs> Sana is laughing. Well, it was totally worth it. <laughs> Sans is laughing too. Everyone is happy. Everyone is laughing. This is so corny. Let's just get home. It was a long day. It's time to go to bed. You start dreaming. No one needs me. No one loves me. I wouldn't be happy if I'm gone. I... I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. It's such a beautiful day outside. The birds are singing. The flowers are blooming. Oh my god, are you going to be doing Judgment Hall? Is she going to be the new judge? On days like this, you children should be having fun outside. It's really such a pity it's not safe anymore. You all look like you need the fresh air too. Oh well, I'm sure everything will be over by the end of the day. Everything is too quiet. Frisk, I have a surprise for you. Here we are, Frisk. Aren't you excited? We're at Tori's house. Hello, Toriel. I'd like to give you something. I guess you could call it a peace offering. A stack of papers? They're the adoption papers. I only need your signature here and over here. After you sign, I promise you'll be approved as Friska's legal guardian within a day. I is this real? Frisk, did, did you hear that? We can be a family now. My child, I I'm so happy. I I'm sorry I'm crying again. Being a mom isn't easy, you know, but I trust that you can do it. Yes, yes, I promise. We're going to be the happiest family you've ever seen. <laughs> I knew th this was going to happen. Sona reminded me so much of you when you were younger, Tori. I knew you two would get along. I told you it was just a matter of time. You always were the optimistic one, Oscar. 
I nearly ruined that, didn't I? But, Tori, you didn't do anything. Precisely, all those years ago when the children... As queen, it was my duty to protect my people. As your wife, it was my duty to love and guide you. I failed in both endeavors the moment I hid from my responsibility. I wanted to live in my fantasy protecting the humans. Yet every child left my side and ended up at the old door. It must have been so painful for you. You may be a fool, but you're not an evil man. Toriel, it's not your fault. I'm no longer the man you married. We've changed so much, haven't we? I should be the one to apologize for everything I've done. Especially for the things I haven't done. I, too, should have explained my decisions to you. I should have communicated my thoughts to you. I suppose I thought, as the king, I had to take all the hard decisions myself and not involve you. As if I needed to protect you. I tried to do everything on my own, and I failed terribly. Tori, I should have asked for your help instead. You know, I think we should start over. R really? As friends, yes. I'm happy with that. Come here, everyone. Asgore, Hagsana, Toriel, and you. Everything is working out in the end. That is right, and tell me. All the monsters that disappeared have just returned? Yes, it appeared they were all just lost, weirdly. The humans found them yesterday night wandering around the desert. What desert? Hold, hold the phone, hold the phone. What desert? Where was the desert on the map? It was mountain forest and then city. Where was the freaking desert? Who told you desert? Where does desert come into this? What is this? What do you mean? <laughs> was there a desert in the underground? What desert? My brain. <laughs> There's no way they're going to accept desert. Come on. You don't really believe they were lost in a desert, do you? Well, that is one less problem. What about the human attacks? We still have no clue who's responsible, but all the suspicion on the monsters has been lifted. The last victim described the attacker as a small child. What? A child? Wait. A child? One of the kids from the orphanage? Or is Kara doing stuff in our body when we're sleeping? Is that why we're having dreams? Is Kara going out at night attacking people? I hope Kara is not possessing my bo Frisk's body at night while we're sleeping. We are currently looking into the matter. It's not exactly simple to arrest a child for this sort of thing. Well, if it's a small child, then that child needs help. We will help, Search. Thanks, King Asgore. One other thing. Effectively, maybe your people are now allowed to come and go freely through town. On behalf of the city, I apologize to all monsters for the cold welcome. Let's put these unhappy events past us and look into the brighter future as one community. Frisk, you should spend the day showing your friends around. There's just one thing I want to ask you. Later today, come to the flower field with your friends. There's something I want to tell everyone. Oh? And what's that? After Sona left, you spent the day showing the monsters around the city. The humans stared at them, but no one said anything. After that, you went to the flower field. Miss Sona, we came like you were requested. <laughs> Wow, we what a cute garden! Flowers are my our best friends. Hey son, and thanks for convincing your father to let us visit the city. It was awesome. I can't wait to go to the beach. We should totally go together. The drunk food here is so good. I must have eaten like twenty nine hot dogs today. Why hot dogs? You think of all the things you would have ate, it would have been other foods besides hot dogs. Like, of all the foods he could try, he's like, no, nah, I just, I, I had, like, so many hot dogs, apparently. The, the, of all the foods, he's like, hot dogs. <laughs> yes, the human city is great. We passed by the movies today. Soon you'll see my face all over the place. I'll become the most famous movie star the service has ever seen. 
In fact, I could swear humans are getting used to us. They didn't panic any more than a few times. And Miss Sonny, is everything alright? Why did you want to meet us? Meet you here? I had to come here to find some determination to do what I must do. I finally made up my mind about the monsters. Monsters are not like humans. They are different. That is not a bad thing. I think the world is a little better because you are here. Miss Sonna, thank you so much. That means a lot to us. In the future, I hope. I also want to apologize for all the hardship my ancestors have caused you. Everything that happened from then to now was caused by our stupid decision, by our stupid fears. Miss Sonna, you don't need to apologize for anything. You've been nothing but nice to us. <laughs> Absolute. No, she hasn't. She's been quite rude at times, so don't- No, Papyrus. No. I was a hypocrite. You don't understand. Everything was my fault. Miss Sonny, you don't, don't say that. You're such a kind-hearted child. Would you have said that about the warriors and wizards that trapped you in the underground? I'm not very different from them. Do you know what happened after they trapped you? They wanted to make sure that no monster could ever escape. They built a second barrier and trapped not only monsters, but also themselves inside, and they stayed here and built a town. Actually, it was the three barriers. Everyone that lives in the city descended from the wizards. It's our duty to make sure no monster will ever escape. You are still not free. The barrier is so strong, no wizard or human can ever break it. But I have an idea. I can use this. Sonna is pointing at the necklace her adopted parents gave her. So she was the kid from the dream. If, if she is the kid from the dream, then she is Kara's sibling. Oh my god. This is an ancient artifact that wizards created in the wall against monsters. It's cable containing souls. They never used it, but I found it rather useful. Over the years, I've captured the souls of every human in the city. They are all trapped here, but if I were to release the souls, the power may be enough to break the barrier and free everyone. What does she mean she captured them? What, what does that just mean? They're walking around, aren't they? What? Why would you trap all the human souls in there? What is going on? Human, you are making no sense. I'm afraid we're not following you. My child, I think I'll have to explain from the beginning. Who are you and what is happening in this town? It all started when I was a child. My parents gave me this likeness without knowing what it actually was. When I first realized what this artifact could do, I decided to protect humans. I hid the souls so no monster could ever steal them. You literally stole all their souls, my god. Somehow, the mind and the body were able to remain intact while I was holding the souls. So humans were able to live their normal lives and never even realized what was going on. I became the caretaker, waiting for the day the monsters would escape. As I was holding the soul in my power, however, they did whatever I asked them to do. I became the ruler and attempted to create a utopia. When you came, I could never bring myself to hurt anything, not even monsters. My plan was to keep you all here. I was hoping that I could steal monster souls too and force you to live with humans in peace. Monster souls are very unique. I had to conduct experiments before I could safely steal your souls. That is why so many monsters went missing. My fear of monsters blinding me. I now understand that you're not the real threat. I am. Flowey, I want to apologize to you too for forcing my dirty work on you. I'll also give you back your soul, as promised. Come out. Don't be afraid. You literally... I knew I was hearing Flowey run the place. I wasn't expecting that you were responsible for that. Poor Flowey. Really? Can I have my soul back? Yes, it's almost drained of power. I don't think you can get back to your original form but it may be just enough to make you feel something again. It's my way of saying thank you. <laughs> Flower friend, what are you doing here? Sona found me after you left the mountain. She forced me to help her with her plans. She's too strong and controls everything around here. 
I had no choice. I'm sorry. I've been trying to help when no one was looking. I found ways around the place too. I'm glad everything is coming to an end. It's okay, Flurry. So, it was you two that caused all those unfortunate events over the past few days. Yes, but you don't have to worry. I'll set everything straight. Toriel, Asgore, thank you for everything. I'm happy Kara could find such a loving family despite everything. Kara, why do you know that name? Kara was the most important person in my life. I don't have many memories of my real parents. The first memories I can recall are of my siblings, and I lived in the streets. My siblings and me living in the streets. After a while, there was no one, only Kara and I. Kara was your sibling? Yes, Kara was taking care of me since I can re remember. Why did you turn out nice then and Kara turned into a horrible little thing? Yeah, so I was on to something. She was Kara's sibling. Well, I, Kara's in us, so I don't know how Kara's gonna react. There are many things I don't remember about that time and many others that I shouldn't. The only thing I'm certain about it was Kara's determination that kept me alive. After a while, we ended up living in the orphanage, the one I run now. Things were better there, but only marginally. So many kids were with absolutely nothing. People cared so little. And yet Kara managed to keep us safe from everything. From everyone. I knew Kara wasn't perfect, but I know how much they care about me and how much of a burden I was back then. I always seemed to be crying, always hiding, and always afraid. After some time had passed living in the orphanage, a couple visited us. They wanted to adopt me, but couldn't take Kara. They were good people, but didn't have much to give. People convinced me it was for the best. I ended up going with them. Kara was my family, my best friend, my whole world, and I never saw them again. After a while, I heard the news that Kara disappeared from the orphanage. Rumors spread that it had been monsters. I asked my parents to take me every day to Kara's flower fields. I secretly hoped that one day I would find them here. But Kara never came back. I was heartbroken. One day though, while we were at the flower field, a monster appeared. Oh no. It was holding Kara's body in its claws. Oh, she did see Ezreal. It was looking straight at me, with so much hate in its eyes. I started screaming, and it wasn't long before the entire village came running. They attacked the monster with everything they had. It was a horrible sight. So much blood, so many screams, so much pain. The monster tried to escape, still holding the body of Kara. I followed it. I don't know why. I suppose I wanted to get Kara's body back. We ended up on the top of the mountain. The bleeding monster looked so confused, so scared. All of a sudden, light came out of it. This light pushed both the monster and Kara's body through the barrier. It was over, but the light remained there for a brief instant. My necklace activated and swallowed the light inside it. It took me a while to understand what light, what that light was. It was after the events I discovered how to steal others' living souls. I couldn't do anything for Kara, but I could prevent other children from suffering the same pain. In my utopia, everyone will be happy. Everyone will behave. Most humans didn't even notice that their souls had been taken. You were literally controlling them like puppets. They happily lived their lives. But once in a while, a soul with enough determination would manage to escape. Those humans ran to the mountain, never to be seen again. I thought it was foolish, running from heaven, to just fall into hell. Your utopia isn't perfect, lady. But it really wasn't, right? They weren't happy, and I never saw that. I knew it didn't matter, even without monsters. The effort required to steal by their souls was instrumentable for them. They were doomed to die soon after gaining what they had dreamed so hard for. So, Gory, you never killed a human? Of course not. But I had to make everyone believe that, didn't I? So what she's saying is that the kids died not because of Asgore that they actually were gonna die inevitably and because they took back their souls when they escaped is that what she's trying to say is that what she's saying right now 
has got you didn't have to say that you did it. it mm. Frisk was an exception. I never took Frisk's soul. I don't take the souls of children until they disobey me. And Frisk has never done anything to displease me. Really, I'm surprised. I never understood why Frisk left. But now, I think I do. After you broke the barrier, I went to check the mountain. H hey, was it- what, Frisk broke it? That's where I found Flurry. Oh yeah, because we broke it to get out. The monster stole the necklace went wild. I realized that somehow that flower was the monster that killed Kara. I decided to use it to make him pay for what he had done. Then when Tori and Asgo talked about their children, I realized what really happened that day. Flowey, I'm giving you your soul back. I light leave Sona and moves towards Flowey. My, my soul? Can it be? I feel funny. I feel funny. <laughs> Thanks for everything, Ezreal. I'm really sorry. E Ezreal? E e Ezreal? Oh my gory! I, I can't! Ezreal, how can this be? Mom, Dad, I'm sorry. I never wanted you to see me like this. Keg, Quaid, I'm sorry too. It was all my fault. You say I wanted to bring your son back, but... It's alright, Doctor. I'm alive because of you. And thanks to Sana, I have my soul back. <laughs> Sana, thank you. Oh my god, this is turning into a very nice story. How is this gonna go terribly wrong? Why are you thanking me? For everything. Don't thank me yet. There is one thing left to do. <laughs> Wait, what would happen to you if you really saw the souls? E won't she die? I mean, if she's been around for like a very, 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 very long time, won't she die? Is she gonna die? <laughs> this process seems rather unsafe. I stopped being me a long, long ago, from the moment I took the soul of a human. This body that is neither human nor monster has lived for decades without aging. I'm frozen in time. However, what is now cannot and shall not remain. Without flowery soul or human souls, I doubt I'll survive for very long. Yet everything is fine. I feel at peace. Just promise me one thing. You will take care of the humans. They can't do this alone. N no, wait! Don't do that! It'll be fine, I promise. The suffering I cause, the sins that I bear, this is the only way. Watch out! Idiots, did you think in this heartless world there can be anything like a happy ending? The only? You're only with a few laughs and hugs everyone will change? That is so stupid. Frisk! What are you doing? That's not Frisk. That is not Frisk. That is Car. Car is peeved. I'm a demon. You thought everything is just going to be fine at the end? That's so boring. I refuse. What's happening to Frisk? Oh, Ezreal, don't you recognize your best friend? It's me. You know, what I want, Ezreal, what I have always wanted, to turn this world into dust. There is no point. You should just give up. <laughs> Ezreal, do you remember last time we met? Kara, is that you? When the world is happening? Sis, why are you so surprised? It's all your fault. Kara, I... I thought you'd forgotten about me. Thank you for everything you've done. I finally see how worthless everything is. I, I, I know, sis. I know. You're going to make it up to me. Things are very different this time. You all will die over and over and over again. I'll keep destroying this world again and again. As if. Give Frisk's body back, you freak! Flory, don't defend me! Ezreal, what are you doing? Don't hurt Kara! Ezreal, this is not Kara. This can't be Kara. Oh, not so. Can't you recognize me? I thought you loved me. Or were those all lies so you could steal my soul? Kara? But how? My children! 
This is not possible. How are you here? You know, same thing could technically be said about Flowey being here, but you know, we've already established how that happened, so never underestimate Kara. With his will, with his way, there's a Kara, and if you peeve off Kara, Kara is coming for you. Don't know, don't care. But Ezreal, wasn't it your fault too? You betrayed me as well. Our plan failed because of you. You were going, we were going to be together forever. We would destroy humanity together. But you, you abandoned me too. I must thank you. The more you hated me, the more you wanted me to disappear. The more determined I had not to. I couldn't leave until all of you paid for what you did. And everything in this world. Humans. Monsters. Everything needs to be destroyed. They're all corrupted. They're all ugly and disgusting. You know it. No amount of hope or dreaming will change them. All this world. You can't escape this hell. Look at me. I died so long ago, yet I'm still here. This world. This hell. Kara's upset because they're literally stuck in an endless loop and they can't get out. It doesn't matter what Kara does. Kara is stuck. Kara can't stop this. And I bet you, deep down, it bothers Kara because Kara also wants to have some closure. If we destroy it, then we can truly be free. This is the only way, Sana. You know I'm right. I'm always right. Don't listen to that thing. Come on. Destroy everything? Wanna play again, Funny Bones? Don't you remember what happened last time? Hey, what happened to your brother? Oh, that's right. You don't remember? Hmm, I wonder why. Oh yeah, because everything was reset. Why do you even care anymore? It doesn't matter what you do. Everything is pointless. Mm -hmm. However, if I destroy everything, if I destroy everything for real, you see, we can all be free. And that's supposed to be better? No, he's the funny one. No. Stop it! Flower friend, let us go! We need to help the humans! We're friends! Let me talk to Kara. She's my sibling! Oh my god. Kara, I don't understand why you're back. If Sona is your sister you told me about, aren't you happy you can finally see her again? I'm your best friend, Kara. You can be with us. We can be a family. Friends, family, that doesn't mean anything. Family abandons you. Your friends betray you. Those bonds are lies. Aren't you going to betray me again, Ezreal? I'm not betraying you. I'm stopping you. Like I did before. Like I should have done from the very beginning. You're wrong. I care about you. And if I can't make you see that, who can? That doesn't mean anything. I gave you everything I had. My friendship, my trust, my family, my home, even my body. You destroyed them all. Now that I'm finally recovered a little bit of what I've lost, you're trying to take it away from me again. Why, Kara? Why do you hate me so much? You lost everything because you were weak. Now enough of this. I'm getting bored. Come, sis. This time you can help me. Help me destroy everything. Kara, you're back, and I... Why... Hello? Alright, Sona. Kara tried to kill you merely, like, not that long ago. If not for Flowey stepping in when Flowey did, you would be dead right now. Don't talk to Kara. You love me, right? And if you love me, you'll do everything I tell you to do. No, Sona. Snap out of it. Don't let Kara do this. Flowey's right. I'm not a six year old anymore, Kara. Kara, please, stop. You don't want to destroy everything. You just want to hurt me. So do it. I deserve it. But please, don't hurt anyone else. Uh, this is Kara we're talking about. Since when does Kara give a toss about what do you request? No, Kara, you don't have to hurt anyone. We care about you, Kara. We always did. We loved you so much. Don't lie. I was just convenient for you all. Everyone used me. No, we loved you. After all of this, we still love you. You don't care. You only care about your own pain. You only care about making us feel it. No one could ever feel like this, ever. So you think I'm suffering enough? Everything I've done in my life was so that we could be together. Says, says I'm sorry. I love you. 
please help me. Please. I'm in so much pain. Why are you falling for this? She's Kara's going to kill you. Kara literally attacked you mere moments ago. Why are you this daft? Kara doesn't care about you. I'm so alone, so afraid. Please, her. Sona, no! Watch out! <laughs> You've always been so stupid. Now that my sister is no more, let's erase this world once and for all.